We are back on the Rational Boomer podcast. Hopefully your day is going well. It is Saturday. Thanks to Jace for joining us yesterday. Good news. Ed will be joining us tomorrow. But today, just me, all by my lonesome. Fortunately, we have a lot of emails and a lot of stuff to talk about, so we should be able to get through this without any trouble. Now, I want to bring up one story before we get into it, and we'll probably talk about it more later in the show, but it's kind of a funny story. In regards to Donald Trump's criminal case in the Manhattan District, Judge Juan Marchand issued a note, a memo of some sort, earlier. And what he said was, is there's a report of somebody on the court's Facebook page who commented on a post and said, and this was before the verdict was revealed. This person said, hey, my cousin is on the jury. Just to let you know, Donald Trump is going to be found guilty. Now, of course, this got all the Republicans all excited and hyped up and such. They start screaming, mistrial, mistrial, mistrial. And as far as I know, you can't really ask for a mistrial after the trial is over. Now, some people have said that this happened before the trial was over, so maybe they can't. But the bottom line is, this is a post on Facebook. Facebook is a place I first found out about QAnon. So you got to take, uh, take something from Facebook with a grain of salt. So anyways, this gets all exciting for the Republicans. They're all screaming and yelling, see, we told you Donald Trump will be redeemed. The thing about it is, is if there was a mistrial, they just have another trial. This doesn't negate Donald Trump's crimes. He committed the crimes. But these sorry fucks are just looking for anything, any glimmer of hope to try to get Donald Trump out of this. Unfortunately, as this all got hyped up, the original poster who said this about his cousin reposted and said, L -l listen, man, you got to cool down. I'm just a professional shit stir on, on, on the social media. This is what I do. It's a joke. It's ridiculous. It's funny. Now, I'm sure the Republicans will continue to think it's real and that it's all deep state and all this other shit. But some people genuinely got nervous about this, thought this was going to be Donald Trump's opportunity to get out from underneath this. And it's not. It's ridiculous. It's sorry. And it's pathetic that the Republicans have lowered themselves to this level to think this is the one thing that's going to save him. It is not. It's not something to worry about. It's not a big deal. It's already been debunked. So let them talk all they want, but it's all absolute bullshit. We'll talk more about that later because some interesting things happened around it. We do have some emails. We have a, quite a number of emails. We've had a lot of guests recently, haven't had the opportunity to read emails. So I thought, fuck it, let's do it today. First one says, hi, Boomer, present for my daily therapy. It's not the power of positive, positive thinking that plagues me. My patience is wearing thin, though. I'm on the constant MAGA bullshit. Now we have to subject the courts to more deceptive attempts to overthrow the judicial system. When are the Democrats going to grow enough balls to say no to Trump's illegal shenanigans? If the Supreme Court decides to run interference for him on these 34 counts and we, t we take it lying down, we deserve what we get. Maybe SCOTUS can, will, maybe they can't or won't, but this Swiss cheese for a legal system will unnecessarily exhaust, delay, and drag out the system from slow to sludge. MAGA pigs may be happy in their own slop, but there is no reason for the rest of us to wallow in it with them. Yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about the Supreme Court when it comes to the Manhattan District. There's a remote chance that they might enter into it, but probably not. It's really not their jurisdiction. And they wouldn't be able to even enter into the situation until after the appeals are exhausted in the state of New York, where the jurisdiction is. That could take two years. And by that time, Donald Trump's lot in life will be vastly different. He will have lost an election. He will have no protection. He will have three other trials in the works. 
So don't worry about that. You're absolutely right, though, that the judicial system in this country is absolutely fucked. It is kind of like Swiss cheese, and we do need to do something about it. We always thought Congress and uh, the judicial system had some strength that people feared it. But what we found out with Donald Trump and all this little Trump fucks, it's all a bunch of bullshit. Apparently subpoenas, you can show up or not show up. The DOJ may go through a process and uh, take somebody down, or they may fuck around for two years, like in the case with Merrick Garland and Donald Trump. Had Merrick Garland done his job, we'd already be done with Donald Trump's trials, and we wouldn't be going through the bullshit we're going through now. So I agree with you there. The email continues, says, was glad to hear Ed back with you on Friday slash Saturday. I enjoy all your guests, especially Ed and Old Soul. I know you have a lot on your plate already without us patients on your couch. However, I wish one or all of you would consider an ongoing podcast dedicated to the accomplishments of the Biden-Harris White House, an informative podcast that goes in depth showcases and informs people of just what they've accomplished, but how and when they go into effect. Common sense discussions to contradict the lies and a presentation or outline of what Biden wants to further accomplish. It just seems to me that a lot of people have never even heard or don't even know how or what Biden has done or how it affects them directly. Lay out Biden's plans and compare them to uh, the nothings that Trump has not. Well, I'm going to do that right after I get done with the emails. There was something that happened yesterday, and there is some comparison necessary for this. Anyway, the email goes on. We need to talk more about voting, the process, and why particularly local gov government never seemingly informs or announces it's public about elections and when they're happening. There isn't a dialogue concerning the candidates who are running or their views. I don't understand why the local level, we don't get this information. No wonder people aren't voting. Oh, well, just a thought. Keep on, keep it on, Boomer. And thanks for what you do. Mary, Biden, or bust. Yeah, you know, I, th I think there is something to be said about that. As much as we take down Donald Trump and the Trump LaFox, we should start crowing a little bit about the, um, about the accomplishments of the Biden administration, because frankly, what the Biden administration is able to do in the last uh, three and a half years has been absolutely amazing, especially when you consider the fact that the Republicans have been trying to obstruct him all the way. Still, he's been able to do that. I've got a, a story that we'll talk about once we get done with the emails. Hi, Mike. I hate to say, not really, that I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying the Trump effects, especially our distinguished laughing congressman sticking up for this mentally ill, demented liar. Losing their minds for this fucking piece of shit, I was watching Morning Joe and they posted at least two respected polls that say by far, like two to one, that the verdict was the right one. Every day is going to be falling farther and farther. 54 more to go power of the people are actually working. I love it. Now that's patriotic. Rhonda. Thank you, Rhonda. I appreciate that immensely. And you are absolutely right. All right. The next one says, Hey, Boomer, I'm liking the not a podcast podcast. I've kind of fallen away from TikTok, So you don't see your videos very often. And I like you. I'm a lazy motherfucker and I'm not going to dig around your YouTube page, and I don't have Instagram or the books of face. Question for you. My wife asked me the other night why they waited so long for Stormy Daniels' hush money trial, and uh, I didn't have a good answer. I dug around a little bit on the interwebs, but not for very long because I, like you, am a lazy motherfucker. I figured I would ask my favorite dumb white guy in Minnesota, not No, not me, wondering if you ever have any thoughts on this or, heaven forbid, the shit that scares the fuck out of Republicans. Facts. Thanks as always. Dad, not as cool as this kid, Dave. Now, when you say why it took so long, I think you're talking about the fact that this affair happened, this affair with Stormy Daniels happened in like 2005 or 2006. 
Why did they wait so long before they started the prosecution? Well, here's what you have to understand, Dave. The crime wasn't him paying off Stormy Daniels. The crime wasn't him having sex with Stormy Daniels. The crime was when in 2015, 2016, he got nervous about Stormy Daniels, and that's when he paid her off. That's why it took so long, because Donald Trump, for whatever reason, wasn't worried about Stormy Daniels up until the point just before the election. So that happened pri just prior to the election, 10 years after the fact. Uh, the payment came around 2015, 2016, and the fact he did it to interfere with the election is <clears throat> is why the crime was committed. So he couldn't have been prosecuted prior to making that payment because he hadn't committed a crime, at least in this particular circumstance. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Thanks very much, Dave. All right, the next one says, hi, Boomer. How ironic is it that these guys will be screaming about Hunter for getting a gun while being an addict? That's rich. The guys who want crazy felons to buy AR-15s unchecked are going to carry on about this. Half of them while polishing their gravy seal gun collection, blind drunk on Coors. Yeah, I was talking about the Hunter Biden case. That was going on yesterday. And I don't know if they finished it or not. The defense uh, is up and presenting their case. But the interesting thing about this case is what the crime here is. And I don't know that everybody understands this. The crime is very simple in this particular case. The prosecution has alleged that Hunter Biden purchased a gun while addicted to drugs. And then he signed a federal form saying he wasn't addicted to drugs. Now, here's the interesting thing. How are they going to prove that he was addicted to drugs at the very moment he bought that gun? That's going to be difficult. It's going to be very, very difficult. And maybe the reason why they didn't want to bring this case to court in the first place. But then the Republicans stick their nose in. They want to do anything they can to try to taint Joe Biden. So they force the issue. And now we have a trial. But here's the thing. Hunter Biden and his defense team don't have to prove that he wasn't an addict. Much like Donald Trump, Hunter Biden enjoys the fact that all he has to do is create a reasonable doubt. Now, what I heard about the prosecution, it seems like there's plenty of doubt. I mean, you can't categorically say he was addicted to drugs at the time because you really don't know. I mean, it's not like um, it's it's not like there's a recording of Hunter Biden saying I'm addicted to drugs and I'm buying a gun. There isn't a bunch of documents in Hunter Biden's bathroom saying I'm addicted to drugs and I'm buying a gun. None of that is there. I suspect that ultimately what will happen is, or what should happen, he should be acquitted of this because there will be reasonable doubt or a shadow of a doubt. And, But with the judicial system the way it is, it's hard to tell. It's kind of fucked up. He may get convicted. Uh, he won't get much time. It's all pretty. You'll probably get probation. It's not a big deal. But the interesting thing about this was is that somebody – Somebody uh, interviewed Joe Biden, and they asked Joe Biden very specifically, will you accept the verdict in this trial with your son if he's found guilty? And of course, Joe Biden said yes. And then they asked him, will you pardon him if he is convicted? And he said no, which is a vast difference between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, because Donald Trump, as you remember, pardoned Steve Bannon, who was a greasy fucking criminal. He pardoned uh, Manafort, which was his campaign manager that had all kinds of collusion with the Russians. So Joe Biden is handling this thing like an adult, like a president. And that's good to see. I think Joe understands what's ultimately going to happen here. Hunter Biden will get some kind of slap on the wrist if he gets anything at all. And Hunter will just have to pay the price and be accountable for what he did. I have no problem with Hunter Biden being punished if he committed a crime and if they can prove it. All right. The email continues. 
On another note, I have to insist at this point, Boom, that Trump will be the nominee. I heard Chris Hayes do a good analysis of it. They've calculated that Trump, no matter how despicable, creates at least a reliable floor of 35 to 40 percent for them. He's going to be propped up at the convention, no matter how grotesque it is, to 60 percent of the country. Yeah, you're, you're, you're pushing back on me when I say he may not be the nominee. When I say he may not be the nominee, it has nothing to do with numbers or the prospects of him handling the base. I'm just saying the way he looks, the way he talks, and the amount of pressure and the amount of shit falling on him, there may be some unforeseen circumstances that would cause him not to be the nominee. A breakdown mentally, a breakdown physically, I don't know what. All I'm saying in that particular case is when you've got any man or woman, maybe they're 35 years old, you have 34 felony charges that you're convicted of. You've got at least 54 more coming. And then they take away all your money. You're being embarrassed every day. Donald Trump is a fragile, emotional animal. And this could break him down. I'm not saying it's going to. I'm just saying it could. It would do it to a stronger, younger man. And Donald Trump is neither stronger or younger. That's why I'm saying he might not end up being the nominee. But make no mistake, I hope he is the nominee, because I think that's the best scenario for the Democrats. Email continues, I'm convinced that even we forget how horrible he was as POTUS day by day and in total. I'm reminded of Betsy DeVos with her 10 yachts in charge of public education. Her kids were never within a mile of a public school, and her unabashed goal was to get that giant pile of money away from parents and localities, I guess, for her 11th yacht. And meanwhile, there's her brother, Eric Prince, privatizing warfare while his employees, after being painstakingly convicted, were pardoned by Trump for murdering Iraqi citizens for sport. And that's just one fucking threat. <clears throat> that putrid pile of crass criminality deserves every experience coming his way. Best garage door, Jeff. P.S. Where are we at with a boomer t-shirt? <laughs> just use the drawing from the podcast logo. Paste that bitch on some plain white tees and let's get this going. Don't need no slogan, just that face with that ornery look in their eyes that, that the artist did capture. You can use the funds to subsidize soul in her humanitarian efforts. You're right. I've been kind of lazy about that, but you know that. You know I'm lazy. I handed it off to my son. I said, hey, could you do something with this? He said, sure. And of course he didn't. So now I got to figure out how to do it. it. It should be pretty easy. I think I can do it on one of those... Um, print per sale websites. I could probably just put it on a, uh, uh, a shirt there and make it available and you can buy it there. I don't know who would want to buy it, but you know, it's conceivable. Uh, the question I would have for the people that may want to buy this thing, do you want it like, um, like we saw before one of the uh, listeners that made one for themselves? Do you want a big picture on the front of it or you just want one up in the, say the left chest area, which, which would you prefer? Do you want the option? I don't know. I'll get on it. I'll get on it, Jeff. I'm sorry. You're right. I fucking dropped the ball on that and I need to get on it. All right. Stephen Canada says, do you think Trump is setting up for the failure of true social? Do you think it's possible he's part of a group with Mnuchin to buy TikTok from ByteDance? In the end, ETTD, and it doesn't matter who owns TikTok to me, is I have decided not to use my account. But just wondering what you thought. Keep up the great work, Steve, in Canada. I think True Social is failing. I mean, we keep hearing about all the money they're losing. Whether their stock goes up or down, ultimately, it will fail like a paper tiger it may look good from the outside to some people but there's nothing inside of it there's no substance there's no success there's no money there's no followers not enough anyway to get it done and as far as tiktok mnuchin or anybody else nobody's going to be in line to buy that 
Because TikTok is going to go on for a while. There's a lot of time in between now and when they are supposed to sell it. But now there's a lawsuit about the First Amendment. You remember the first time they tried to do this, courts uh, knocked that down because of the First Amendment. And they're probably going to do it this time around, too. You have to understand when it was put out there, the Republicans don't care. They did it for perception. And they got whatever that was worth when they forced it to be in that bill. Joe Biden, I don't think he cares either. I think he did that to appease the Republicans so he could get the bill passed and send money to Ukraine. I think once the election is over and they're still fucking around in this in the court, it'll slowly fade away and it won't be an issue. I'm not worried about about uh, TikTok getting banned. It's just it's not going to happen. All right, the next one comes from Scott. He says, I will will be glad when the election is over and he loses again. He doesn't have any protection because the Democrats have the House and the Senate and the presidency. I'm so hoping Jack Smith can make the right move and file the right paperwork to destroy Cannon and get her removed from the bench permanently. I'm in the same mindset of, uh, uh, as you that after the election, he will get destroyed in all three cases. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. Donald Trump is wishing away his life. He wants all this stuff delayed because in his mind, his delusional mind, somehow he believes that he will be elected president. Yeah, I get people all the time saying, what makes you think that he won't get elected? How are you so confident? And I list all the things, Roe v. Wade, 34 convictions, the split, uh, the uh, fracturing of the um, Republican Party, how 15% of the Republican Party has said they won't vote for him. 49% of the independents won't vote for him. If he doesn't have unity in the Republican Party and a lot of independents, he can't win. There's no way he can win. But I always ask these folks, you seem so sure that he could win. Please tell me how. Show me the path. Give me the data that tells you he can win. And they can never tell me any data. They just say, well, I just have this feeling. Well, I heard this on the news. And therein lies the fatal flaw. Once again, you're working off of emotion and fear. That's not what plays here. The facts are what plays. Get rid of the fear. Get rid of the emotion. Look at the facts. And if you look at the facts, you can't help but agree with me. I'm not a genius. I'm not a uh, wise old sage that is guessing this and predicting it and hope to be right. If you look at the facts, the facts tell you what's going to happen. That's what told me was going to happen in 2022 and the same thing that's going to happen in 2024. All right. Next one comes from Grandma Patty. That picture going around the internet of the five black female justice isn't quite the whole story. They are definitely justice of the circuit, but there are five of 22 justices and may or may not be assigned to his appeal. When you think about how many people are living in Manhattan, you know that five appellate judges just aren't enough. I know how you like to deal in facts, Grandma Patty. I'm glad you brought that up. There was a lot of memes on TikTok when Donald Trump was talking about appealing and they'd have this meme of five justices or judges and they were all black women. Now, if that's what Donald Trump draws to, he's got a fucking problem. But I knew right there that that it probably wasn't the whole story. It was a convenient story for people, and it was funny, and it was clever. But you're absolutely right. There are 22 justices, and they're not all black women. But still, it's New York, a highly liberal state, and Donald Trump is going to have trouble with appeals anyway. The important thing to understand is before we get into those appeals, it's going to be quite a while. It's going to be well past the election. And when Donald Trump loses the election, his power, his strength, his support is going to diminish considerably. So he doesn't have a chance in the appeals. There's nothing to appeal. And um, I'm not too worried about the appeals. I'm just glad we got the convictions uh, because that's the thing that's going to do the most damage to Donald Trump. All right, the next one. Hello, Boomer and Boomer's Brigade. You've warned us about the media and negativity. 
I'm here to tell you it comes from our side too. I won't mention the guy's name, but he has a page on Facebook called The Warning. Yesterday, a story popped up about the resurgence of the Proud Boys, emphasis on boys, and how they're going to back CF 45. He coupled that with a story how basically our worst fears are upon us now, that something is coming because we're not paying attention, lack of civility, uh, you name it. This gave me anxiety and it also really pisses me off. What are we supposed to do after reading this crap? Get everybody in the family an AR-15 and buy a surplus tank? My conclusion is social media is no place to make final decisions. It's not going to decide the future we are. You have it right. You have to stay calm, use your brain, and analyze your emotions and control them. These idiots running around the media or both sides are truly evil. Everybody stay cool and ignore the bullshit. Z-Man. You have to understand when you're looking at social media, the first and foremost goal of most people out there on social media is to get followers and get views or get listens or whatever it is they're trying to get. That's their goal. And they will say whatever they have to do in order to incite some fear or something in somebody. Um, <clears throat> I keep hearing people talk, talking about, oh, the violence is coming, the civil war. Well, then please explain to me why we heard this prior to the indictment. So if you indict him, there's going to be trouble. He gets indicted. Nothing happens. Well, if you take him to court, there's going to be trouble. He went through court. No trouble. If you convict him, boy, oh boy, there's going to be trouble. Well, he got convicted 34 times. What happened? Absolutely nothing. Now they're saying, well, if you put him in jail, if he gets a jail sentence, there's going to be trouble. No, there's not. They are fucking bullies, and bullies are cowards. They don't walk into anything. They don't do anything unless they're sure they're going to win because they're fucking cowards. It was easy for them to do when they attacked the Capitol because Donald Trump was the president and protected them. It's a much different situation now. you got a bunch of the criminal or the violent ones already in jail, so they're out of the equation. Joe Biden is in charge. And I got to tell you this, if they're going to attack the Capitol or some other building, Joe Biden's not going to sit there in the kitchen laughing and being entertained by this. He's going to go into action. The National Guard will show up. And if they persist, it's going to be a fucking mess. I mean, that's just it. They're there to protect us from terrorists, domestic and from abroad. And these are domestic terrorists. Nothing like what you saw on January 6, 2021 is going to happen again. These people don't have the courage, they don't have the power, and they don't have the organization. Remember, the only reason they could do what they did on January 6 is because they had people in Congress helping them organize. I guarantee you they're not doing that now. They're sweating out the prospect of getting an indictment regarding the January 6 situation. There's not going to be any violence from the Republican side. They're just not. They keep claiming, they keep threatening, and people keep shivering and clutching their pearls and being scared. What are you fucking scared of? These guys are a bunch of pussies, and they've proved it every fucking day. They've proved it. So just lighten the fuck up. Don't worry about any violence from the Republicans. They are losing. They are on the run. We are chasing them, and we just have to make sure that we put them down for good. Because if you don't, when you least expect it, they'll rise up and like a fever blister or a boil on somebody's neck, and they will cause problems again. That's why it's absolutely important that as we continue on this process, that we take them down, put them down permanently, eradicate them from Congress, from the Oval Office, so They've got nothing they can do. And I'll tell you this, after the election in November, they are going to get beaten so bad that they're going to have to rethink everything. They're going to realize Donald Trump isn't, uh, isn't a positive for them. He's a, um, he's a problem for them, and they're going to step away from him. Same with MAGA. MAGA is not winning. They're a small majority anyway, but the Republicans have been pussies and have not been willing to shut them down. They'll have no choice when they fail again and they lose all their power. They're going to have to come up with some different approach 
and they will. And I don't know what that's going to be, but it's going to take a while before they can get any traction by changing what they look like and what they sound like. The Republicans are in trouble. We need to finish the job, get them out, and then start trying to get back to business and do some things that are good for this country. But um, the people I'm least worried about is Trump LaFox and MAGA and Donald Trump. These people have never been weaker in this entire period of time. They've never been weaker. And they're just going to get weaker. There's nothing out there that says they're going to gain steam or strength. There's nothing. So let's just enjoy the fact that they're on the run. Let's run these motherfuckers down and put them away for good. All right. We are going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. We are back on the Rational Boomer podcast. We have more emails. I told you we had a shitload of emails, and I'm cool with that. Keep sending the emails to rationalboomer at gmail.com. I love reading the emails. Sometimes they're even better than when the guests are on the program because we get to hear from a lot of people, and all of you have some insights and perspectives that we all should hear. All right, the next email says, Dear Mike, in 2016, Hillary Clinton was investigated for having a private email server, and it was a devastating blow to her candidacy. Now Trump has been convicted of 34 felonies, and the media continues to tell us it will be a close race. Well, excuse me, but what in the ever-loving fuck has happened to this country? I feel like I'm taking crazy bills. This man has done more than any of us even begin to list, and he's still being taken seriously. Well, I will tell you this. There's more to the email, and we'll get to that. I will tell you this. I don't think it's even going to be close between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Honestly, if he is the nominee, there won't even be close. But what you have to understand is, is that uh, there's no money in saying it's going to be a wipeout. There's money in the media telling you to be worried, to be scared, to be close. Like I've said before, it's like a boxing promoter. They're promoting this title fight, and they have to make sure that both sides seem formidable, and it's going to be a fight that you can't miss. you got to watch on TV. I've said before, if you took a fight with a promoter, like, like uh, Don King, for example, he was the ultimate bullshitter. I had a chance to meet him once, and what a piece of shit he was. Anyway... Um, if you had a fight between Mike Tyson and Paulie Shore when they were in their primes, seems silly. But if you would have had that fight, if that had fight that match had been set up, I guarantee you Don King would say, Yeah, Paulie's small. He doesn't have a lot of experience, but that motherfucker's wiring. Something crazy could happen. They'll always be hyping the fight, the contest. And that's what the media is doing. You talked about Hillary Clinton and her problem with the uh, server, the private email server. But if you remember back in 2016, what was the media telling us? They were telling us that no question Hillary Clinton was going to win. They could have said, oh, Hillary's fucked because of all this. They didn't. They said Hillary's going to win and they're doing the same thing here. Anyway, we'll continue on. He has lawsuits still pending in Georgia, Florida, and Washington. And while we're at it, why the hell are we wasting time trying to figure out who can see the classified documents in the Florida case? They're classified. That's all we need to know. It doesn't matter what's in them. The issue is that shit stain is no business keeping them. And to top it off, Molly Jong Fast, whose opinion I respect, said if he loses in 2024, she suspects He'll run again in 2028. Yeah, he may want to run in 2028. I'll guarantee you he won't be in any physical condition. He won't be a factor in 2028. If he loses in 2024, especially to the extent I say he's going to lose, Republicans don't want any fucking part of him. 
Donald Trump will be a non-factor. He'll be inconsequential by 2028. Don't even bring that up because it's not worth worrying about. He goes on to say, um, or, or she goes on to say, can't we just be done with him and all his bullshit already? I feel like everything will wind up being all right, but sometimes the insanity of it all gets it to me. Thanks for what you do to support those of us who sometimes falter in our self-assurance. Tanya from Cleveland. Well, Tanya, thank you very much. And I understand that it's it's tiring. And this is why I tell you, take the emotions out of it. Now, I've heard and looked into as much stuff as all of you, and I'm not burnt out by it. And I'm not spent by it because I don't, I don't accept it emotionally. You know, it's like business. I had a situation one time, I think I've told you this before, and this was a good illustration of how I can take emotions out of things. And you can do it too. It's just a matter of practicing it and doing it. When my mother died, I was asked to do the, um, eulogy. And I did, and it went very well. Um, but before I did the eulogy, my brother came up to me and says, Hey, you, you going to be able to handle this? Can you do that? And I was kind of insulted by it. I said, what do you mean? Can I handle it? I've been on the radio for years. I've spoken in front of crowds. Of course I can handle it. And he says, no, you dumb fuck emotionally. Are you going to get upset? Can you keep it together? I said, oh, hell yes, I can keep it together. And when I went up there and did that eulogy, it was like a switch goes on, like, okay, I'm doing a show now. The emotions didn't come into it. Now, after the fact, I did get emotional about it, but I was able to set it aside for this instance because I had a job to do and I needed to do it properly to pay tribute to my mom. And I was able to do that. And the same can be said for what's going on here. Here's another thing that people do. They worry in advance about the possibilities of something terrible happening. There is no value in that. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of emotion. It's a waste of energy. Don't worry about shit. Just do the work in front of you. Hope for the best. Plan for the best because that's what will happen if you do your job. You can't agonize what might be down the road. Somebody once said that people do this all the time and 98% of the time the shit never happens. And people are are uh, relieved when it doesn't happen, but they don't think about all the time and energy they wasted and the trials and tribulations they put themselves through. So just focus on what's in front of you, get it done, do it to the best of your ability and have faith that it's going to turn out the way it needs to. All right, next one. I believe this is Garage Door Jeff again. Uh, and he says, soul. He calls old soul just soul. Soul shows how shows now consistently get three birds stoned at once for me. <laughs> First, she informs my old male mind on what the issue of abortion really means to real people and the utterly egregious things that are happening to women in red states. She does do that. Then you two move on to the news of the day, and somehow every fucking simple, single time, Soul has a perspective that I hadn't heard from anyone else. Yeah, I agree with you there. I talk to a lot of people. I talk about this shit. I really look into it. I have a lot of different angles that I look at, but you're right. She's one of the few people I've ever met that will sit down and say something to me, and it's not something I'd ever thought about. That's how smart she is. Anyway, Jeff goes on to say, this time it was the jarring juxtaposition of the red, white, and blue. I'll stick an American cowboy boot up your ass, crowd, moving directly to we are a shithole country. Good grief. And they didn't even pass go and collect $200. Thirdly, there's always a zinger in there, and you have to listen because sometimes it's quick. <laughs> yeah. Old soul will surprise you now and again. And the quote is, can you even imagine Joe Biden doing cocaine up in the White House and I'm eating at 1 a.m. eating chips and cleaning up? Jesus Christ, that's funny. All right. Thank you for both maintaining the sanity for many of us out here. Best garage door, Jeff. Now, it's P.S. It's become sadly obvious to me that these Trump rally goers are just like deadheads. They even dress up together in a similar way to enhance the communal atmosphere. And there's a whole scene outside of the main show, but I hate the comparison. I attended about 20 
uh, shows and happened to meet Jerry Garcia in the Kona airport circa 1990, where we were on the same flight. He's a friendly and understated guy. Thank you, Jeff. You always offer some great insight. Now, the next email says, hey, Mike, I've been noticing ever since Don the Con was convicted, seems like corporate media is doing their damnedest to go after Biden. Wall Street Journal, which is another Murdoch-owned rag, ran a hit piece on Joe today saying behind the scenes he's slipping. I guess they don't watch or pay attention to Don's public speaking. The dude is definitely going through some things. Also, The Hill ran a story asking, could Trump win in a landslide? Hmm. JFC, I want to try to get my news from various sources, but this is BS. They want a close contest, but I just don't see it happening. The same corporate media that said there was no way Trump could get indicted. You just got to tune out the BS and be positive. And if you're scared of a second Trump term, get involved with your local Democratic Party and always listen to the rational boomer to calm your ass down. Thanks for all you do for the boomer brigade. Your buddy from Texas, Jace. <clears throat> yeah, the the mainstream media is just doing what they do. Their first job isn't to inform you. Their first job isn't to tell you the truth. Their first job is to get you to watch and increase the viewership so they can make some money. That's what it is. <clears throat> now, when I do what I do, of course, it's nice when we get a lot of viewers and a lot of followers and a lot of that stuff, but that's not my focus. When I started doing this, my intention was, and then, you know, this is what I've said about HVAC Jeff and some of these other fucks. If you go into this game, as it were, and you're chasing followers, you're going to lose. All you can really do is do the best you can with the content that you're putting out. And then the followers will come. You'll get what you deserve based on the work you do. And that's pretty much what I've done. I, uh, whether I have 300,000 followers on TikTok or 3 million, it really doesn't matter. I mean, it's nice to be able to have an impact and connect with more people in order to extend my uh, agenda, our agenda. Uh, but, you know, what the hell? Uh, there are people out there that have more followers than I do that have more people listening to the podcast, but that's okay. I'm uh, grateful for the audience I do have. And now I feel like I have a responsibility to that audience and that audience deserves to get whatever best I can offer. So that's what I try to do. And like I say, other people can have more followers or less followers. It doesn't really fucking matter. Just do the best you can with what you have. All right. The next email says, just a quick note about the Nixon-Kennedy debate on TV. Nixon also refused to wear any makeup, so he ended up looking pale and sickly to the viewing audience. Thanks, Peg HM. Yeah, if you've ever seen that video of that um, debate between JFK and Nixon, there's a pretty stark contrast. JFK was a young, attractive guy. The women all loved him. Richard Nixon, former vice president, was this older guy, kind of weird looking, kind of cringy looking. And then you throw a bunch of sweat on his face and make him look pale. He doesn't look very appetizing. And that was part of his downfall. But what people have to understand, what's interesting, you, you hear about all the uh, election interference and stuff of this day. You have to remember the JFK Nixon election was very, very close. And there was some talk about the Kennedy family kind of interfering in the election, especially in Illinois. Talk of payoffs to uh, Illinois folks in order to get JFK that state. Now, I don't know to what extent. I haven't done a deep dive investigating it. But this whole idea of politics being a dirty business, this isn't news. Basically, what's happened is Donald Trump is so stupid that he brought everything to the surface like a fever blister. And now we've seen it firsthand. But this stuff has been going on for some time. It's just that people prior to Donald Trump were a little smoother about it. All right, the next one says, hello, Mike, OTR Russell here coming to you today from Madison, Wisconsin. 
Really been enjoying your work recently. I'm more relaxed these days, largely due to your confidence in the coming fall of the felonious fraud. Your confidence has become my confidence. Thank you. Anyway, I understand Trumples is now not allowed in many countries around the world, including our closest neighbors. So I'm wondering what Mexico will do when they inevitably catch him sneaking across the border. LOL. Uh, that's, that's an interesting picture. Do you have any thoughts on who the Republicans will nominate if they finally realize they can't send a 34-time convicted felon to the White House? Keep up your good work, OTR Russell. And that's over the road, Russell. He's a trucker. Who they would send in Donald Trump's stead? Well, whoever they send will be a sacrificial lamb because whoever they send, if that should happen, can't win. They know it. We know it. Even the candidate would know it. Some say uh, Nikki Haley, but I, I find that hard to stomach that they would um, have a nominee who is a woman and born of immigrant parents. That just goes against their, <laughs> their thought process. They're racist. They're misogynist. They treat women like second-class citizens. So I don't, I don't even know how that's possible. Put it this way. I don't know who they'd put up. But it doesn't fucking matter who they put up. It won't work. All right. The uh, next one is from Joyce. She says, in regard to your TikTok about Judge Cannon, can you explain to us why Jack Smith would have to request an assistance from the 11th Circuit Court about removing her from the case? Why is the 11th Circuit Court not watching her every move? especially because everything she does is on the news and in the newspaper. They have to know what's going on right well, that's true, Joyce, but they have to have something to act on. They need an appeal from Jack Smith so they can act on it. And then once that appeal is filed, then Jack Smith can bring everything to light in that appeal. But they can't just say, hey, she's doing some naughty shit, so we've got to get her out of there. There's a process like everything in government, everything in uh, the judicial system, and that process has to be followed. Now, Aileen Cannon has been dancing around making decisions so that Jack Smith hasn't been able to appeal it to the 11th Circuit. But she's cornered now. She's going to have to make a decision. Uh, somebody even suggested that she might just flat out dismiss the case. Well, I kind of hope she tries to do that because that will be appealable to the 11th Circuit. And that will most certainly get her kicked out, kicked off the case. Jack Smith, Jack Smith will get her eventually. Um, I think what you need to do is be happy about the 34 felony charges. I got to be honest, uh, whether there's 34 felony charges or 54 felony charges, it doesn't matter. What happened in the Manhattan district is enough to end it for Donald Trump. Next one says, hi, Mike. It is vomit time as I watch the news or read the paper, etc." Isn't it about time they now try to kick out Mike Johnson as basically a traitor along with many others? The Democrats kissed his ass to get funding deals, but now this is now over. Since Trump was convicted and all the other trials pushed out, isn't it time for Jack Smith to indict the sitting members of Congress and these other traitors, i.e. Bannon, Roger Stone, Ginny Thomas, etc.? How much longer is Jack Smith going to try to be politically correct? Appointing two extremists to the Intelligence Committee should be the last straw for keeping Johnson. Your thoughts on all the above. All the best, Roy. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I would like to see the sitting members of Congress indicted a year ago. That would have been the nice thing. The things we've been hearing, though, is that Jack Smith is talking about waiting to indict those sitting members of Congress till after the election. And I kind of understand that. I still think he could do it now, but um, he wants to get that behind him in, in terms of someone claiming that he was trying to affect the election. And yes, it's about um, a little bit of fear of looking too political. And that's one thing that I have trouble with the DOJ, Merrick Garland specifically. And Jack Smith is, is better than Merrick Garland. But remember, Jack Smith works for Merrick Garland, so he can only do so much. It's all going to happen. 
they're going to get indicted. Uh, we just kind of have to sit there and wait and see what happens. I know you're anxious. I'm anxious. We're all anxious to see these motherfuckers get indicted. But understand, when that happens, it's going to be a shit show. And it's going to, they're going to say, well, he did it because the election was coming up. So it makes sense for him to wait till after the election. But once the election is done, there's really no more reason to wait. So that's what I expect to see based on what I've heard. All right. The next emailer says, hi, Boomer. I listened to the NPR call-in show tonight that asked young voters of their intentions on voting. I was working at the time and may have missed a few things. However, it seemed like about 75% of the callers were young and said they were voting third party to ticket. Your conversation with your guest this morning, I apologize. His name escapes me, Jace probably, or I don't know when this email came in. I apologize. His name escapes me, but he would be a good influencer to tackle this issue on TikTok. Okay. You're probably talking about Abe in that case. He was spot on about the Zion, etc. It will be up to the influencers to make the gens understand this as much as you and I both dislike the conversation concerning Gaza. I posted the following. Gen Z, a third party vote is a vote for Trump. Given Biden a Democratic House and Senate, then you will somewhat empower him to influence the outcome in both Israel and Gaza. Classified documents in Trump's possession is how Hamas knew how to target and attack Israel. Fact is, we know for a fact that Trump did give Russia Israeli secrets. Their Iron Dome military secrets were exposed and made vulnerable by Donald Trump. Don't be another Trump pawn. Trump's election will give to you here in America what Gaza has now right here in the United States. If you want to live under the miserable conditions of a dictator, then go ahead. Vote third party. But something tells me that if you don't like the way things are now, you'll literally hate and cry out for your own relief in the near future. That's a full-blown fact, especially on TikTok. If you influencers don't target that audience, give them the facts, they will remain under the spell of mega propaganda. We can't be afraid to reveal the history behind the misery. A few young voters called in with very sane and rational reasons for voting for Biden in spite of their dis disdain for how Gaza is being handled. Find them and help them become influencers in the most delicate and urgent situation. They all seem to understand that they don't want Trump. However, do not underestimate uh, the third party voting is a solid vote for Trump. These wars and conflicts have been rumblings in the Middle East since the earth, as Billy Joel sings, has been turning. In all this time, it has not been settled, and to think that the United States can or will do it is naive, to say the least. Gen Z just doesn't understand or have the information to decide such an important decision without the knowledge necessary to be pro, for, or against either side. I can't speak to the accuracy of NPR's attempts with this Q&A show because even they have let me down since Trump evolved. However, I do believe it's a step in the right direction. Gen Z's Xers want to be heard too. Better it be heard by common sense strategist, Mary Biden or bust. Well, this is what I tell Gen Z's or, or millennials for that matter. Here's the deal. Third party can't win, has never won, will not win. So you're going to impact one of either side. If Joe Biden wins and you hold your nose and vote for him, at least we can get on track to get to where you want to be, meaning the Gen Zs and the millennials. If Donald Trump wins, you will never get there. You will never have the freedom. You will never have the option. Now, the fact of the matter is, is you can't get well, like the Rolling Stones said, you can't always get what you want, but sometime you have to take the proper path. And while it may not be your favorite, it's something you have to do. It's like getting up in the morning for fucking work. You don't want to do it. You don't like doing it, but you got to pay the fucking bills. So consider it that way. You're paying the bills to get to where you want to go. But I will tell you this. After the 2024 election, guess what? The millennials and the Gen Z's will be in the majority of the voting block. So then it's up to you. 
instead of sitting on your ass and clutching your pearls, you need to get out and do what you need to do and vote properly to get what you want. Nobody's going to hand it to you. You're going to have to get it and take it. And the only way you're going to do that is if Joe Biden is the president. Once that's the case, you can scream all about the things you don't like, but it's going to be up to you. You won't be able to blame boomers or anybody else anymore. You will have the power. You will have the control. It's on you to fix what you think is a problem. And I, I've said this before, and people get mad at me for saying this, but this is the only way to look at it. If you allow Donald Trump, if young people allow Donald Trump uh, to get elected, well, then you deserve exactly what you're going to get. And it's not going to be pleasant. Trust me, as a guy who's 64 year old, 64 years old, my life isn't going to change. Mine is pretty well laid out. I'm going to do what I do up until the time I'm 85 and go on to the next world. It's not going to affect me very much. My only concern is for my kids and my granddaughter and future grandchildren. You got to take this seriously and stop whining about how you want everything right now the way you want it. It can't be done. It can't be done. And as you grow older, you'll realize that's just part of fucking life. You get Joe Biden in, at least you're on the path to get to where you want to go. Once Joe Biden is president, now it's up to you motherfuckers to get it done. You can't blame us anymore. You have the power. You have the votes. You need to change some things. You just have to be in a position to be able to do that. And you can't do that if Donald Trump is the president. All right. Next one says, hi, Mike, about your Dr. Phil TikTok. I agree. I'm not a fan of his either. I was when he first came to the Oprah show, but just something about him that just rubbed me the wrong way after a while. Maybe I sensed he was a grifter. Oprah had two coattail riders for sure, Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz, and they both, both turned out to be Trumplefucks. I was on a chat group yesterday and someone mentioned Phil and Oz, but also threw Oprah under the bus as endorsing Trump. I haven't heard that about Oprah. Just wondering if you have any insight into that. I do not have any insight, but let's just say she's a billionaire. Who is she going to support, Democrats or Republicans? It wouldn't surprise me in the least. I'm not a big fan of Oprah either anymore. <clears throat> I think these people are selfish, arrogant fucks, and they haven't done much for us. They're just about doing for themselves. Hell, fucking Dr. Phil isn't even a doctor anymore. He hasn't had a license since 2006. And Dr. Oz is a fucking carpetbagger. He went to Pennsylvania even though he lives in New Jersey. All right. Anyhow, great shows as always. The Jace show was on point again. Jace gave me a following uh, follow on threads. I tried to look you up, but couldn't find you. I'm Steve on there. Thanks for the unpaid threads profile ad, Mike, LOL. Well, I'm on threads, but I really don't post there much. I, I It just didn't inspire me. I just, I, I really, I didn't do it. I haven't done it. I haven't kept up with it. As it is, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. That's enough for me. And that's from Steve in Canada. Thank you, Steve. And the last one comes from Margie K. This was a, a comment on the podcast page. Nice job. I like all of your formats for getting information out there. I'm not a TikTok person, but I like the brief overview of yours. And what she's talking about is... Um, Here's the not a podcast thing on the audio version of the podcast. Basically, what I do is I compile all the TikToks I've done for the day and put them in kind of a podcast audio format so people who don't see the TikToks can listen to at least the audio. And it it's turned out it's not that hard to do, and uh, people seem to like it. So I'll, I'll try to keep continuing to do that. Now, um, Here's something interesting. We talked about this case where somebody posted on Facebook and all the Trump fucks got excited. Oh, mistrial. A Newsmax host and guest credulous, credulously accepted as fact a random Facebook comment purporting to be the cousin of a juror in Donald Trump's New York criminal trial. The former president was convicted on 34 counts of falsifying business records. 
Judge Juan Marchand, who was presiding over the case, wrote to prosecutors and Trump's attorney on Friday to inform them of a comment made on the court's Facebook page. The comment was left by a user claiming to be a cousin of one of the jurors in that case. It said, my cousin is a juror and says Trump is getting convicted, party emoji, and it stated, thank you folks for all your hard work. Now, the user left a similar comment more than a week before, about 10 days before the convection and several days before the jury began deliberating. On Friday, the user addressed the row, explaining, take it easy. I'm a professional shit poster. Now, Newsmax host Lydia Karan, uh, uh, Lydia is her name. I don't know how to fucking say her last name. I don't watch Newsmax. Reported on Marchand's letter as news of it broke passing off the comment as fact. Meanwhile, guest and attorney Mihek Cook bit hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> Apparently, a juror alerted a relative, his cousin, about the verdict the day before the verdict was delivered. I don't think that's possible because they hadn't voted by then. <laughs> the, the reporter said... And then that cousin of the juror posted on Facebook that Trump was going to be found guilty. It's unclear as to how that could be possibly impact the ongoing legal proceedings. Judge Juan Marchand notified Trump's attorney, Todd Blanche, what do you think about this? Is this a big deal? Lydia said, this is a huge deal. I've been saying this from the beginning. This was a rigged trial from the beginning. And now we're going to see it was rigged all the way to the end. We need more information about this juror to make sure that there is a relationship or this was just some random troll on the Internet. I would tend to believe it's not random. Of course not, because everything on Facebook is absolutely fucking true. There is a relationship. The judge would not have sent the notice to Todd Blanche, former President uh, Trump's attorney, if there wasn't more evidence or something that was troubling. It's funny. There's another TikTok guy. He gets mentioned on this show frequently. I like him. <clears throat> He's a lawyer, so he has some really good insights to these types of things. Um, he said that this shit poster, as he describes himself, <clears throat> posts all the time on this uh, court's website and he's always posting goofy shit he outed himself he debunked himself but these people were so desperate so panicked that they would grab onto anything and they're willing to make themselves look like fools well that's exactly what they did they made themselves look like fools because they saw something that they thought might help them and they jumped on board without checking it out Herein lies the problem with the media. They only want the sensational news. They don't care if it's true or not. Well, as this shakes out, this guy is just a fucking troll. And that's not surprising that he would be on Facebook and be a fucking troll. That's not surprising at all. But they want it so bad. I had people come into my page saying, oh, it's going to be a mistrial. You're going to be sorry now. And I laugh at these fuckers. Now, this person says this needs to be a mistrial immediately. This judge is now going to be on the hook and every single person is going to be watching because we know in jury instructions, you're supposed to be very particular about the evidence that you're talking about. And that stays within the room. Wow, that's incredible, she said. This guy was nobody's cousin. The jury didn't tell him anything. He was just fucking with Trumple Fox. And he admits that. Now, they're going to try to investigate it and expand on it and, and say, oh, this is just the deep state and all that. There's nothing here. It's not going to affect uh, the trial that we just had. There's certainly not going to be a mistrial. Now, Hawk, he said something interesting uh, was that he thought it was almost like the judge was trolling the Trump Fox. He knew this guy posted all the time on this page. He knew he was incredible, but he thought he'd send it to him anyway. I don't know if he's just trying to be careful or he's fucking with him. But either way, it's not a thing. Nothing's going to come out of it. It's just amazing how quickly they're willing to believe something on Facebook. This is the essence of who they are. They are a cult. They will believe anything that supports what they think doesn't matter if it's true or not. If it supports what they think, they're going to jump on board. But I will tell you this, the Republicans, the trump Donald Trump, if he wades into this, are going to look like fools with this because nothing is going to come out of it. They are desperate, though. 
And there'll be other things that crop up where they'll try to expand it and exaggerate it so that it gives them some traction. But there is no traction to be had. It's not going to happen. It's a bunch of bullshit. And they fell for it. They took it hook, line, and sinker, as was said earlier. All right, we are going to wrap up the Rational Boomer podcast. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen. I hope you have a great day. Uh, tomorrow, Ed is on the show, so be sure to join us for that on the Rational Boomer podcast.